we're going to take a look at this. It's the 2015 Nissan Rogue. Now, don't let its exterior fool you. This is a rather fun, rather capable monster of a car. And I don't see monster in terms of power. I mean monster in terms of capability. You see, under that hood is a 2.5 liter four-cylinder motor. It's good for 170 horsepower and 175 pound-feet of torque. It's connected through a CVT to Nissan's all-wheel drive system. Now, a few of the things that make this car a monster is its ability for form and function. In the back, you have a really cool multi-level storage system. It actually makes that back trunk way more usable. The side doors open as wide as I've ever seen in a car with nice theater seating so that children in the back get a good view. It also has tons of leg room in the second row, which is a little surprising for a car of this size. But overall, this is a great option if you're looking for something in the family segment at around $30,000. Okay, so what we have here is the 2015 Nissan Rogue. Uh, right off the bat, it all looks pretty standard for Nissan, and that's a good thing. Um, this is a very straightforward vehicle, and I expect it to give me kind of a straightforward ride. Uh, you could say it's a very honest ride. Okay, let's take a look at this interior before we even start the car. Uh, you have really decent plastics up here with nice shapes easy to understand louvers for the ventilation system. Aircon is right there. Cup holders, right in the middle, right where they should be. And the seating position, it's actually a pretty comfortable seat. Okay, let's go ahead and start it up. So the center dash includes two large gauges. Uh, very easy to read. We have speedo on the right, tack on the left. In the middle is a color multifunction display. In here I can also change all sorts of settings. It really helps you set up a kind of a customized um, configuration for your particular likes and dislikes. One thing I want to point out here, and then you may not see it if you just get in the car and drive, is down by my left knee here is a whole collection of buttons, and, and a lot of them are pretty interesting. Uh, you, of course, the first one is your traction control on or off. Then there's a sport button. It's less aggressive on gas savings. Um, I can open and close the rear trunk lid here. Um, I also have power doors. I can disable the rear power door with this switch. That's kind of cool because you don't always want that. Um, I can hit eco here if I want to get better fuel mileage. So if I want to hit that 35 mile per gallon EPA, I'm guessing I'll have to enable Eco down there. Uh, it also has parking radars and blind spot. Um, and then all wheel drive, I can put it into a lock mode. And then over here, hill descent control. I'm loving the fact that these more budget minded crossovers are starting to provide an off road feature like hill descent control. Now the center cluster here is a nav system because this has the optional tech package. Uh, in it, it is not multi-touch, but that doesn't matter because it's quick and it's super easy to read. You got these big buttons here. It responds instantly. We have traffic over there. Super fast system. It's just like instantaneous. Let's look up Starbucks. I know there's one or two Starbucks uh, in the Seattle area. Go. Searching, boom, done. Hit go, start. Downtown Seattle, Starbucks, calculating route, done. It is so fast and so efficient. I love this nav system. It kills some systems, like the one on the Bentley GT. This one is way better. Yes, the $28,000 Nissan has a significantly better nav system than the quarter million dollar Continental. The model we're driving today came equipped with the SV Premium Package. This includes 360 degree around view monitor technology, as well as lane departure warning and blind spot monitoring. Connecting a mobile device is a simple plug and play affair with impressively fast media access. And of course, seat warmers. It's 27 degrees outside right now. So seat warmers, very much appreciated. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine on high. Okay, let's get buckled up and see how this car does in the real world.
Let's see how the acceleration is. You know, the CVT gives us a little bit of punch. The motor only has 170 horsepower, and that's fine for every day, but it's not gonna win any uh, drag races, that's for sure. And it being a CVT, it is optimized for economy and function as opposed to sheer throttle response. But you know, that, that's enough pickup. Honestly, what, what do you really need in a family crossover? I like it. The suspension feels really good too. You know, they've come such a long way. And this is why people buy crossovers instead of full-fledged SUVs. It's because they have that feeling of driving a car. It's not that raucous back and forth that you get with a truck-based setup. This is really just like driving a car. It just has a little bit of extra clearance. So as equipped, this car is $28,000. What's that comparable to? Mm, well, uh, there's offerings from Honda. There's the uh, CRV from Honda. There's also the Subaru Forester, both of which are excellent vehicles. So why would you get this one instead of those? Well, one of the first reasons I would think is looks. Yeah, that's right, looks. Though this car does not look dramatic, it actually has pretty smart styling. And I really like the LED uh, details that they have in the front headlights for daytime running lights. I think that's actually a really smart look uh, going on in this car. Um, also, the tech, that's a very nice nav system. There's really nothing terribly fancy about it, but everything is just so functional. It's all extremely well thought out. Now, this is actually kind of funny. These visors are massive and actually quite functional. I mean, if the sun is super low, I can block it with this baby right here. Holy. In fact, I can block the entire windshield with it because I'm so tall. So maybe that's not the best way to do that. Let's put that up just a little bit more. Now, you can add other options to this vehicle, of course. If you, if you want a big panoramic sunroof, that is an option. Uh, if you want a leather interior, that is also an option. However, I think that this model right here, the SV all-wheel drive, at least for a Northwest family or Northeastern, is probably the one that makes the most sense. I mean, you have your heated seats, you get great economy, and it's at a value price, $28,000. I don't think you'd really ask for much more in a compact family SUV. I'm Ryan Douthit for AutoNation. This has been our first look at the 2015 Nissan Rogue, a functional and affordable family crossover.